I am Nabila Yani. I'm heading AI apps in Nokia CNS Analytics. And I'm really honored and pleased to be today with Gergi Mihalka. He's the business owner for cloud transformation and automation in Deutsche Telekom. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me here for tonight. It's our pleasure. Thank you again. So we, we announced this sprint, our partnership uh, between Nokia and the Deutsche Telekom to help you to streamline the ML development and the automation of operational tasks. So what were the main challenges you were facing to take such a decision for this journey? Well, uh, we started this journey a few years ago where we were looking into our network operations that how can we improve network operations to make the customer experience better, how to make network quality better. And we started to look into things how to improve incident handling. And then we built our own DNOC, which is dark digital distributed NOC, which is actually handling uh, the incident management. And uh, that's a very reactive way of uh, dealing with the incidents when they already happened. And then we realized that this is not enough and we need to go further and we started to look into the AI ML capabilities where we see that we can do much more than being reactive but we can be proactive and predictive how we uh, are operating our networks. And that was the main driver we embarked on this journey. Um, definitely we see that the CSPs are trying to scale up the AI with efficient ML ops. What was the reason to select Nokia for this journey? Actually, there were multiple reasons. Uh, we started to look into the AI MLOps uh, from multiple angles. We built a very robust architecture, which is uh, uh, true for the entire DT Europe segment and how we are approaching this one. And Nokia was matching very well our technology vision, our technology ambition, as well as uh, the openness because we believe that this is not only about technology, but also co-creation, collaboration, and Nokia was very open to work with us and work with the ecosystem to create an open platform where we can work with, uh, with you as Nokia and then with others as well. The third element was, uh, is the skill set. So uh, AI requires specific skill set, what we see as a scarcity on the markets, and uh, Nokia, with their extensive telco know-how, can really help us on this journey. Lovely Gergen. So basically you are talking about something very important, which is the adoption of AI, right? So actually it requires a transformation from the cultural perspective. It impacts people, processes, tools. So it requires a really a conscious adoption. And we really appreciate when you highlight the openness, you highlight the know-how with our skills and capability. So based on that, so now we have a foundation. I could see our teams have been working very closely in very good cooperation, as you highlighted. So what are your expectations going forward? What are the dreams we have to achieve together? Uh, the dreams? Uh, the dreams are to have more and more use cases in the network operations and beyond. So we started obviously from network operation, very operation-centric use cases, but we see that there are way more areas where AI and ML can help us to build, plan, design and operate our networks better. So we are building a huge list of use cases where uh, Nokia MLOps can help us to realize those use cases. No, I appreciate it. So based on that, and thanks again for, for, for that summary, based on that, what, what would be your advice? for other CSPs who are deciding to start this MLOP journey. So you started some time back, as you said, so you have some, you made some, some step ahead of uh, other uh, operators we are talking to. What, what are the major lesson learned and best practices that you would like to share with others who are thinking about starting this MLOP's journey? I would say that first, get your architecture right. I think that we started from architecture perspective, looking at what is the architecture we want to build. And we realized quickly enough that uh, we need to make sure that we have the right data structure, the data architecture in place. We have the right analytics uh, uh, layer in place and then we can build use cases on top of that one. I really recommend that everybody thinks about it because uh, one of the key enablers is that the data and I think that with Nokia we can really have a good uh, foundation that how we are building our uh, architecture. The other one is what is a really strength of the Nokia platform is the low-code, no-code capability. Mm -hmm. And this is about the skill set of the people. So when you don't have a lot of data scientists for you, I think that make sure that you build something which is able, the, the users, what you have, are able to use it. And for us, for example, the no-code capabilities from Nokia platform is really an outstanding capability. 
Very good. You highlighted a couple of times about the skill set of our people like an added value, so no need to say we are completely committed to make this a successful journey, very enthusiastic about it. So thank you very much for your time, for your feedback, for your thought, and really looking forward to making this a very successful journey. Thank you. Thank you very much.